Jeremiah, let's just uh, kind of begin with, um, you know, you've had the chance to experience game day at Albertson Stadium. At the moment, you guys are on, you know, your average attendance is over 36,000. That would, that would crush the school record. What, what has kind of led to the, the success you feel in, uh, g- especially given the times that you guys have actually been able to experience an uptick in attendance? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. You know, uh, you look at the change and transition uh, from the leadership chair in, in my role. Uh, you look at the hiring of, of Andy, who's a beloved and, uh, you know, a beloved former student athlete and, and very much a part of, of our history and, 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 and really started that foundation when he played. And, um, and then coming out of COVID, um, you know, even though we're still navigating some of those things still, uh, you know, I, I think people were very much looking forward to, to getting back into Albertson Stadium and, and supporting the Broncos. And, and I would like to think that the work that our external team has done um, to improve the game day experience and, and the, the sale of alcohol and, and, you know, opening, you know, tailgating back up and, and trying to create different opportunities and, um, you know, and, and, and even little things that, that maybe people don't necessarily notice yet, but how we handle uh, the in-game atmosphere and what's on the video boards and the songs and the connectivity use, utilizing social media to, to really activate our fan base and, um, you know, uh, how many promotions are, are actually done compared to sponsorships and, and the, the, you know, when there's a stop in action, how we can still keep the crowd going. And, you know, uh, I think, I think all of that has, has played a part and, and, you know, uh, early on, I was very honest, you know, about six games, six outs. I, I still believe that that is, you know, uh, uh, um, doable and, and uh, I think it's expected and we're going to continue to define expectations. So they're not defined for us. And, and those are things that I feel like we can control. One of the concerns with alcohol sales was um, how people would react in the stands. Uh, how do you feel like alcohol sales have gone on that front? And then have you guys also been able to generate a significant amount of revenue with, with alcohol sales? Um, one, it, you know, people I feel have, have been embraced and taken on the responsibility and uh, of, of what that looks like in, in, in regards to having access to alcohol. I, I think it's actually, you know, led and based on the data we currently have, and we still have some games left, um, it's led to less incidents in the stands and, and, and inside and outside the stadium. Um, which the data going into it, um, you know, uh, somewhat told us that. And so that's not necessarily a surprise to us. Um, you know, the, a big part of selling alcohol was keeping people in the stands, you know, and, and not having that reentry policy. And, you know, uh, it's important to, to show up early, be loud and, and stay late and, and support our student athletes. And so anything that we can do to impact that it has been a benefit. Um, you know, when you look at, at the revenue piece, you know, it, it really wasn't, you know, yes, the revenue is, is good, but the decision, you know, that was one of many, you know, uh, um, one of the many points that we navigated when we looked at, at adding alcohol and, and you know, uh, yes, it's good, but it's, it's not the, the driving force behind it. You know, our job is to positively impact the fan experience and, and you hope, and, and some will say, you know, well, alcohol and family environment, but, you know, uh, you know, people don't have to drink. And those that, that weren't drinking before most likely aren't drinking now. And, and you know, those that were tailgating and, and now we're providing opportunities for them to come into the stadium, stay longer, and, and hopefully driving people that maybe stayed at home for, you know, to control their environment a little bit more. Um, we're eliminating excuses for them to come. You know, it, it goes back to the six games, six sellouts. You know, we want to provide an experience for every single uh, fan and student to come to a game that's important to them. And, and that means there are endless options and opportunities, and, and we're going to continue to, to work through those. And, and every year, every game, you should see more. And every year, you're going to see more as we continue to improve on that. Is there a metric you guys can use to um, <clears throat> excuse me, follow the actions of, of fans, if you will, that are consuming alcohol? A, a metrics yeah like is, is there any way you can tell if behavior is is truly up or down so inside there is. Stadium? well and i wouldn't say you know we're still um refining that you know i think you know the more technology we have the more access we have uh, you know or more access our fans have to apps and and um you know uh, 
the more carriers we bring on, which is something we're working towards for next year and, and you know, the upgrades that we made this summer in terms of our system. And those were all positives and it gives us a little more of an opportunity to, to really um, impact that experience because the more information we have and the data we have will drive the decisions that we make. Um, but you can also, you know, look, look at, you know, we have a tech system if, if there are issues within the stands. You know, the alcohol incidents uh, are, are, are down some games and some games it's, it's the same. Um, you can look at, at the cleanup and the, you know, there's various things, the, the number of, of issues that we have, you know, in, in terms of public intoxication and those type of things. Um, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, I wouldn't say we're pleasantly surprised, uh, you know, this is what we expected. And we've done a really good job that, uh, you know, I, I think promoting the Drink Responsibly campaign and, and in our partnership with Stein Distributing, and, and they've been awesome. And, um, you know, that's something that we're going to continue to improve on. And you're going to see that domino into basketball and, and, uh, and other sports, um, you know. So all in all, I've, I've been really happy with, with the work of our team and, and staff and, and, uh, and, and how our fans have shown up. And, you know, the gamesmanship is a big piece. And, you know, that's something that, that as we communicate expectations to our fans, um, they've upheld that standard. You know, Bronco Nation is strong, and, and I think that there's, uh, you know, uh, there's value in, in uh, you know, our fans, you know, and how they treat others and, and treat themselves. You know, uh, a, a quick story, after that Oklahoma State game, you know, I was traveling to Washington, D.C. for the League One conference, and, and, you know, we had our conference meetings there, and, and I had all, you know, I had a, my, my boys safe backpack and, and uh, a, a number of people, Oklahoma State fans came up and said, we would love to come back here. This is such an awesome environment. The fans were outstanding, you know, and that was, as you know, was a, a very tough game for us because of how, you know, some of the things uh, transpired on the field and, and we had our opportunities and, um, and usually Fan bases, you know, they maybe react negatively to that, and and for Oklahoma State, they didn't. Um, you know, they they showed it, uh, showed them what this community is, and 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 what the standard is that that we've been operating under. So I'm uh, really proud about that. So Jeremiah, do you expect uh, alcohol sales at basketball games then too? Absolutely. Um, we've been selling alcohol at at at, uh, um, at soccer and and uh, I believe volleyball. Um, you know, uh, so. It, it's an opportunity to, to once again, you know, impact that experience. And, and I think basketball will be huge for us, you know, a much shorter time frame. you know, traditionally people are going to dinner and whatnot. The goal is to drive them to our facility and to utilize concessions and, and to be that one-stop shop that, that it's a great night out for, for family and friends. And, and we're going to continue to promote that and, and really looking forward to, to what that looks like in basketball. I know that you've partnered with a firm to analyze all of your athletic facilities. Time and time again, you said that you want this to be about the, the greater good of your student uh, athlete population. It's not ju just about football necessarily. So what is that vision in your mind? And we've seen athletic you know, villages thrive at a lot of power five campuses. What, what, is, the, what is the vision for, for Boise State Athletics as a whole look like in your mind? Yeah, very similar to, to that mentality. You know, I, I've said it uh, the last couple weeks, you know, obviously conference realignment is something that is on top of everyone's mind. And, you know, the, the thing, Jay, is that, that you know, uh, our mentality is we are a power five. We are going to operate as a power five. And, and, uh, um, and that's, that's going to be a constant as long as I'm here. Um, and so we very much are approaching every decision within that, that philosophy and, and having that mentality. Um, you know, so when I look at, at this facility assessment, you know, one, it gives me as the new athletic director and, and you know, uh, someone who's been on the ground for 10 months, it gives me a, a better understanding of what our student athletes and our staff and our fans are navigating. You know, the sizes of concourse, uh, the, the, the parking, the, the entrances of our various facilities, um, but then also taking it a step further, um, which would include fan experience and, and premium space, but taking it a step further, the heart of our operations is our administration, our health and wellness, our sports performance, our mental health, um, our nutrition, um, you know, our academics, our Bronco life teams, all those spaces are here to serve our student athletes. And so we want to create more of a robust athletic footprint 
that will that will really drive all of our student athletes through one entrance. How do we plan with that in mind? And so I, I'm really excited about what that what that will ultimately be and, and what, what our vision is. Um, there are no guarantees any of this. You know, uh, we have to fundraise and we have to go out and get the, the appropriate funding to, to be able to do uh, what what I envision. But uh, it starts with that holistic approach of how can we better serve our 350 plus student athletes um, and ultimately how that dominoes into the fan and uh, experience. So um, I feel confident in that process. Um, you know, uh, everything that, that we've received so far uh, very much aligns with, with that philosophy. And, and, uh, and it's what I saw when I first got here. And it's why this process is so important to us because um, it's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for us to back it up with, with the data and, and the appropriate uh, renderings and, and, uh, and, and whatnot so we can better tell our story to Bronco Nation. Are there any potential renderings yet? Um, not yet. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, um, you know, uh, at some point we will have. And, uh, you know, the goal is, is uh, you know, for us to, to beat, um, you know, our, our various media partners uh, to the open records and, and for us to be able to tell, tell that story. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's something that, that I think not only impacts what our fans see and, and, and what, you know, this vision is and, and, and the process that, that I very much believe in, um, but it also impacts recruiting and, and it impacts, uh, you know, campus. And, and so there are a lot of moving pieces of that. And so we want to make sure we're aligned. Um, that's, that means we're going to do our due diligence and we're going to ask and curiously ask a lot of questions and, and make sure that, that myself as the leader of this department and, and our collective team is thinking through this you know, uh, with some things in mind, you know, such as additional revenue streams or, or that recruiting aspect or that the health and wellness of our student athletes or, um, you know, uh, um, there's a number of things, how it impacts the city, you know, and, and the economic impact that we have, you know, on this community when we have six games, six sellouts, you know, do we have seven home games, you know, how does that impact facilities and, and you know, uh, and how we better serve you know, and accommodate the needs of others. And so um, we're going to continue to, to, to run out those ground balls and, and go through that process. And, and I'm really excited. You know, obviously, we always talk about Albertson Stadium and, and football is, you know, a very much a driver, you know, for who we are and, and, and what, what this industry has become. Um, but I'm just as excited about Extra Mile, you know, and, and what does that look like for us? You know, we have a, 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 a unbelievable coaching staff and in, in men's and women's basketball program uh, and, and you throw in gymnastics and you throw in the opportunities for volleyball to utilize that facility um, that ties into the overall holistic view that that we've discussed uh, to serve those 350 plus student athletes and, and the fans that support them. Jeremiah when you talk about an athlete's village I mean I think of uh, again a uh, a space where pretty much all your athletic programs are connected. And if you look right now, soccer and tennis, when there's bad weather, are, you know, kind of down the road. Um, tennis is, you know, in the heart of campus. Bronco gym, it's, it's intimate and cool. Don't know if that needs to necessarily be updated, though, to fit maybe more accommodations. But, how, I mean, is that... Is it realistic to have an athlete's village on campus at Boise State? I mean, what, what on earth would that require to get done? Well, one, and you won't be surprised I say this, um, unrealistic expectations produce epic results. Um, everything is possible. You know, that's how I approach uh, every decision I make. Um, you know, uh, that's part of being a leader. And, and, um, and if others don't see it, my job is, is to, to paint a, a, a a really nice picture for them. And uh, so do I think it's possible? Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I believe we have the space. Uh, I believe we have, uh, you know, the infrastructure set for the majority of our sports. Yes, we're spread out a little bit, but I think there's some things we can do. I mean, when you look at, say, soccer, you know, soccer has to play their, their matches, um, you know, uh, their games uh, in early afternoon because we're not allowed to have lights. Um, like I said, we are going to operate as a power five, you know, so we have to dig into some of these spaces and, and how we, 
how we positively impact, you know, the, the student athlete and fan experience. And, and so, you know, I do think that it's possible. I do think that we have um, the necessary space and, and my job is to go out to find the, the resources to make it happen. And I need Bronco Nation. And that's something that, that I've, I've held true and, and have said many times since the day I arrived. Um, it's going to take a team to get there. It's not just me. It's not just our department. It's, it's this institution. It's, uh, it's the city. Um, it's the state. We are not just the front porch of, of this great community or this institution. We are the front porch of this state. And, and, uh, and that's important and it's powerful. And you look at the growth of, of Idaho and, and uh, that's something that I, 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 you know, I take very seriously. Um, we're not just representing, you know, uh, ourselves, we're representing the masses and it's gonna take the masses. It's gonna take the team to, to really step up and, and help us get there. And, and my job is to tell that story and to go out and make it happen. Um, in years past, we've seen San Jose State go through a renovation at their football facility. Uh, San Diego State is, you know, they're, they're going to be kicking off a, a new stadium. Um, Colorado State, you know, a few years ago opened up their place. And with all due respect to Albertson Stadium, it's just, it's just been a while. So what is the sense of urgency for a, an upgrade at, at Albertson Stadium? And, and when, when do you expect and, and what do you want to see potentially that place look like in, in a few years? I think I'll be able to better define that as we close out this assessment and, and now that we've gone through you know, our zero based budget process and are really you know, putting the pieces together and aligning them to, to launch a campaign at, at some point. Um, you know, uh, my goal is, is to be prepared in the spring to really lay out this vision and, and to put pen to paper to say, this is what this is going to look like and this is what it's going to take. Um, you know, football in, in Albertson Stadium is very much a priority. You know, uh, um, the decisions that are being made, uh, you know, uh, within our industry, it, a lot of it is based off football. That doesn't mean that I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that football is the most important, but it is very important. And, and our staff and, and our institution understands that. And, and so I would like to, you know, there needs to be a sense of urgency and I would like to move as quickly as possible. Um, but you know, there's, there's reality to this as well. And, and, but we're going to be unrealistic and, and that's okay. Um, you know, I think a lot will depend on, on, you know, uh, um, what we consider as low hanging fruit, you know, uh, there's some things that, that whether it's updating technology or, 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 uh, um, you know, uh, our graphics package, you know, and, and, and how we, we paint, you know, the inside and outside you know, blue, you know, uh, um, and, and it obviously is blue, but, but how we can impact that into in where every year our, our fans are showing up and our student athletes are showing up, they're seeing something different, something new. Um, and, and we need to do, do better. You know, uh, we have so much history here, Jay, and, and we need it on our press box. You know, we need it on Stickle. You know, uh, it, it can't be, you know, uh, every year, you know, us going to the sign shop and, and recreating banners. Um, that is not power five mentality, you know, and so we need to take it to the next level. And so it, it could be how we celebrate our teams to, to um, additional uh, um, premium space to, uh, uh, which would include, I mean, we have a ton of space underneath our concourse, you know, on, on single side of the stadium, like we could create a, an additional club. I mean, there are a number of things that we could do that I would consider as low hanging fruit. And when you look at a vision and a plan like this, um, this isn't like a 12 to 18 month deal, right? This is, I'm, I'm trying to look very much into the future and, and what we do today is, very, is going to impact what we do, you know, uh, uh, on and off the field tomorrow. And so, um, you know, it, it starts now, but this could be anywhere from a, a five to 10 year deal plan where, where we look at holistically every sport program, every facility and say, this is what we're going to do. And the donors are going to drive that. Bronco Nation is going to drive that. Um, and I'm going to drive that. And, uh, and we'll prioritize and, and you know, we understand there, there isn't a money tree, but we have, we have uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say perfect, 
uh, perfected, uh, you know, this blue collar, you know, mentality, but we have, we have grown accustomed to stretching dollars and, uh, and that's going to really push me to, to leverage, you know, a lot of our partnerships and, and relationships within this community, whether it's with the city, whether it's with our campus, whether it's with donors and sponsors, um, you know, uh, we need to, uh, to uh, unite and lock arms and, and it can be done. I know it can be done. And, uh, and I've seen it when you look at Houston, new facilities across the board, you know, that was a 10 year plan that started when we were at the University of Houston. You know, uh, um, when you look at UCF, when you look at Cincinnati and the upgrades they've made, and, and most recently, if you've looked at what they've announced, that, you know, uh, some of the things that they want to continue to do to, to better serve their, their constituents. You know, uh, um, th those are things that, that are in, in, I'm watching and I'm following and, and I'm making sure that, that we're always going to be a step ahead. And uh, there are no guarantees, but, but I've told you this before. Um, I will guarantee you our team's work ethic and, and uh, attention to detail and, and commitment to the process. And, and I'm not one to make excuses. You know, uh, whatever we don't have, we're gonna go out and get, and we're gonna find a way forward. From a visual, you know, a couple of years ago, it was, actually two, it was actually a year before you were hired, Boise State released some renderings of the east side of the stadium. Are, are those renderings still significant in any way? And from a structural standpoint, we, we've heard about maybe bowling in one of the other sides. Would, yeah. that, would that cause other you know, projects like at the athletic center, if, if you guys choose that side, would you guys have to tear down and rebuild that too? Potentially, you know, one on, on the renderings, I think any visual is good for our fans to, you know, and, and for our, our potential student athletes, et cetera, to, to you know, wrap their head around what we're, what we're thinking. Um, you know, very rarely do, you know, does the finished product, you know, uh, look like the actual rendering, but it at least gives us a vision and, and you know, it takes my words and, and it shows, you know, a picture of, of maybe what we're thinking, um, you know, that was a start, you know, if you go back a little bit further in, in mid 2000s, uh, Acom had done some work on campus, you know, and, and, uh, and that was one of the, the reasons why I wanted to utilize them because I, we need to have a sense of urgency and I didn't want to start over. I didn't want to start from scratch. Um, you know, I, I wanted to take what they've done, what others have done, you know, uh, some of our, our community partners and, and I wanted to use that as as kind of this foundation of, of how we wanted to move forward. And it helped them, I think, to wrap their head around, you know, what, what it could be. And, uh, and there's so many different options and opportunities with this. I mean, you look at what other institutions have done, you know, and, and we've talked about the east side, but are we better served at, at something in, in the end zone that very much becomes the heart and a one-stop shop or a centralized location that we run everyone through, fan and student athlete, um, and creating some additional space and, and, um, and still impacting the east side of the stadium, you know, from a concourse and, and concessions, et cetera, and, and things that aren't necessarily fun, but very much needed as I've, I've walked the concourses and, and seen how it operates on a game day. So, you know, yeah, does it, does it help us? For sure. Is that the finished product? Absolutely not. And, and I would expect us to have updated renderings and other things that that uh, we'll be able to utilize as we go out and, and tell and sell this story. When it comes to obviously paying for these projects, I mean, there, there's, you obviously have to raise money to, to cover all this. Is there any idea how much you anticipate you have to, you're going to have to raise and what are potential ways to generate more income? I mean, um, heard the ideas of, of sports cryptos, NFTs, uh, can the state do anything to better assist the Boise State Athletic Department? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, when you look at, uh, um, and I'll start with the, the, uh, the additional revenue, you know, uh, in what I call buckets. Um, what are those buckets that, that we're gonna have to pull from? Um, every, everything counts, everything matters. You know, so it's, it's increasing our sponsorships. It's doing a membership drive. We have to be so intentional with what we're doing moving forward. Um, Bronco Nation is strong. We have a little under 4,000 members. We need to be at 10,000, right? Um, and, and someone had asked me, you know, is that based on comparisons with the Big 12? Yes and no, or, or, or any other conference that potentially there's interest down the road. And, and not saying that, 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 you know, I have grand plans for the Mountain West and what we could ultimately do in, in this conference. But my job is always put us in the best possible position. And, 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 and to, to serve these constituent groups that we talk about. 
Um, but you look at the membership, I'm very much looking at, we are very much looking at every dollar counts and, and what does that look like and what is that pipeline? You know, you go back, we haven't done a capital campaign, I think the last one ended, uh, you know, in 2012 and, and you would have to, you know, um, check me on that. Um, we should always be in a campaign. And so having a membership drive and really driving that, that pipeline that will ultimately impact you know, who we go out to and, and, and ask, you don't get, you don't get what you don't ask for. Um, you know, that's why six games, six sellouts is important. You know, we need to make sure that, that we continue to grow that pipeline. That's why it's important the, the, how we serve our student athletes or our students, not necessarily student athletes. And, and, and I'm so impressed and so proud of those that have showed up because I think our first four games were, were, you know, maybe a, it may be a record for us. And so when you look at, at all those pieces, that's very much gonna tie into how we drive the revenue. But then there's some non-traditional ways that we can do it. Um, you know, uh, you look at NFTs, you look at sports cryptocurrencies, you look at fantasy games and, and what this, and where this industry is moving. And, um, you know, I think we, you know, not only need to be ahead, but that's my expectation. We are an innovative institution. That's something we're very proud of. And, uh, and it doesn't stop at blue turf. You know, we are gonna continue to push the envelope and we're gonna continue to do things and take risks that, that maybe others aren't willing to do. And, and, but I'm not concerned about them. Like we're gonna continue to control we can. We're gonna look under every rock and we are gonna identify the necessary revenue to move this vision forward. And, uh, and it starts with membership drives and filling stadiums and, and, and that ultimately becomes you know, uh, uh, more of a, you know, these facility projects become more of a reality as, as we look at that. So we're creating, you know, a, a, a unit within our department um, that, uh, that we haven't necessarily been public about, but that we're still, you know, aligning, uh, you know, getting our ducks in a row, um, but very much, uh, you know, is concentrating on that innovation piece, you know, and how does that impact name, image, and likeness and some of these other spaces that, that are, are new and non-traditional to, to what we, we've we become. So um, I'm really excited about it because I think those opportunities are endless. You know, it's, as soon as you take the blinders off, you know, and 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 you see some of the things that are happening and, and your willingness to go out on that limb because that's where the fruit is, um, you're gonna see us do some epic things and, and it will produce epic results um, one way or another. You know, I can't guarantee everything and I know that branch is gonna break, but that's my responsibility and and my job is is to, you know, to to take on a level of risk that uh, that will that will move us forward. Um, what was the the first question? I I, I went oh, just, skip over uh, I think we are just about the state too, potentially, if there if there's anything they can do to, to also assist there. Yeah, I mean when you look at, at what we're we're receiving, um, I think there's opportunity, you know, uh, um, I absolutely think that, um, you know, uh, we have to, you know, there's some things that, you know, when you bring someone like myself in and, and with the experiences that I've had at other institutions, um, it brings new ideas to the table and, and new ways of, of getting these things accomplished. And, and so I've been so grateful for the willingness of, of, you know, my teammates on campus and, and the teams I'm on there with, you know, our president and starting with her and her commitments, you know, to, to think differently and, and to, you know, uh, run out these ground balls of, of what could the possibilities be. And, you know, uh, and I'm excited about that because I do think there are opportunities, but that's just one bucket. You know, it, it's, it's not one individual bucket is going to get us there. We're going to have to unite and we're going to take every single revenue stream and we're going to create some new ones. And it's going to lead to us doing uh, some really cool things that that I think Bronco Nation will be uh, proud of and excited for. Conference realignment is obviously kind of an exhausting conversation because it's always happening. There's rarely updates that anybody can actually share about it. But one thing that Commissioner Thompson said the other day when we were talking with him is he said that the members requested him to come back with a number of options. They didn't want one option, they wanted options. So from Boise State's standpoint, were there any options that, that you specifically wanted to see? Where do, where do you want to see the Mountain West go and grow that can better your brand at Boise State and uh, fr quite frankly, make it worth staying in this conference? Yeah, I mean, well, one, I, I think there's some things out there that, that are still being defined, right? Like um, what is the college football playoff going to do? Are they expanding or not? I believe they will expand. I believe it will be 12 teams. That's just one person's opinion. 
Um, maybe I'm being hopeful. I don't know, but um, that's that's what I believe. Um, you know, I think that that impacts our conference. Um, you know, I think we need to, you know, and, and have been and, and been really impressed because I haven't been here, you know, all that long. But, you know, uh, um, the thing with conference realignment, uh, you know, you have to uh, to be prepared for if and when that time comes and, and be willing to, to, you know, uh, be proactive and, and be willing to, you know, pivot at the appropriate times and, and put yourself in a position to do so. To, to make decisions that are in the best interest of, of the, the conference and, and the individual institutions. And, and I think that's what Craig is speaking to. You know, uh, um, we, that, that same innovation that we, you know, are, are striving for and, and continuing to, to improve on here at Boise State, I'm, I'm seeing that transition to the conference and, and, uh, and I'm excited about it because um, you know, I've said it before, I don't think conference realignment is done, but, you know, our job is to do what's in the best interest of this institution and, and, you know, who knows what that looks like three to five years from now. You know, I, I think, I think the, the, uh, there's, there's always realignment discussions and, and, you know, I can't tell you the specific date, but I do see another realignment taking place and, and how do we as a conference position ourselves you know, to, to, to be in that, that group to where we make it so good presently that, that there's no reason to, to leave. And, you know, geogra geographically and, you know, a number of, you know, uh, rivals and a number of other things play into to how it impacts, you know, uh, Bronco Nation. Um, you know, uh, my, my goal for us, and, and I'm just one person in, in, in that collective team, you know, with the conference, but, you know, uh, I, I want us to make this the best possible conference it can be. And, and I believe we're doing that. And I, I believe we're headed in the right direction. This is more just a yes or no, Jeremiah. Boise State can turn, or BYU can terminate their contract with you guys at any point, right? I mean, they can. yeah. And okay. so, you know, I'll, I'll add a little bit more to that. Um, you know, one, they've been awesome. Uh, I have a lot of respect and uh, for their athletic director. Uh, he's been around a long time. Uh, he, he's uh, highly regarded in this industry and and is someone I look up to as as a new AD. And and um, so I've enjoyed my conversations with him. Um, they've done an outstanding job there, uh, you know. Uh, and so uh, I, as I was there for for uh, you know our game, you know, I was uh, Joe and I were on the sidelines as you know uh, uh, as we were you know. Uh, finishing out and, and, and ultimately winning a very big game for us. Um, and he's and he's telling me, hey, did you see that? And, and what if we did this? And so it really got the, the creative juices flowing for us. And, and so I have a lot of respect for them. Um, you know, uh, they can get out of that contract. I fully understand why they set it up that way. Being an independent and having to do scheduling like he's had to do is very difficult. And so with them going into the Big 12, what does that schedule look like? And and he has quite a few rivals. Uh, when you look at us and you look at Utah and you look at Utah State, it's probably not realistic that they're going to be able to play all three of us every year. And so, you know, uh, what does that look like for us moving forward? I think there is a, a desire for us to continue the relationship and, and not just in football, but also creating more with basketball and some of our other sports. And, uh, and those are conversations we're going to continue to have along with Florida State and, and everything else that ties into to our football schedule you know with the college football playoff potentially expanding and realignment there are a lot of moving parts that we don't necessarily control but it very much impacts what the future of our schedule looks like and and uh you know i want to make sure that that we schedule appropriately and you know we have a really difficult schedule this year along with you know the next four or five years and you know uh, it's important for us you know to to put something together that makes sense and 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 i have to you know, as the athletic director, I have to think through, you know, uh, how it not only impacts the fans, you know, and, and, and whatnot, but I also have to think through how it impacts our team and, and best preparing them and their strategy around that. So we're going to continue to do that. And, and I have a lot of confidence in, in our team that's, that's working on it.